Hello, welcome back to my channel, welcome to today's video. Today's video is the next episode in my long running series, five meals for under 25 pounds from Aldi. I'm creating meal plans and meals, some of my favorite recipes, some of my favorite meals, and creating them on a tight budget, five meals for a family, for under 25 pounds, all from Aldi. If you've just joined me on this journey, you've joined me probably at the best video because autumn recipes are my absolute favorite and today's video are my favorite autumn recipes. So five of my ultimate autumn recipes. I've had the best week filming because I've literally indulged in my five favorite cozy warming delicious meals. It's been fantastic. And also something to mention, these are really achievable. If you are a beginner cook or if you are not confident in the kitchen, these are really simple, easy ways to cook luxurious meals. I was staying on a budget. I am currently working behind the scenes on providing something where all of my recipes can be found and um, written out really easily for you. But do follow along with this video. If you haven't already, go watch the, this video because that is the shopping list breakdown. So it gives you a general idea of the shopping list you're going to need for this week. And then come back to this video, watch this video. I'm gonna stop talking because there is so much goodness to see in this video. Make sure you watch right to the end and there's five absolutely unreal recipes here and yeah enjoy okay guys i am starting with an absolute banger this is my infamous guinness beef stew i cannot recommend taking the time to make this enough this describes autumn and winter to me it is so unbelievably delicious and much easier than you think to make from scratch so the first thing you're going to do is dice up your beef. So you've got a roasting beef joint. We are actually halving it for our recipes this week. So you're going to use half in this recipe and half in another recipe. So you want to dice it into cubes about this big. Uh, you don't need to remove the fat. It's up to you if you do, but I don't to be honest because more flavor. Um, so I dice up all the beef and then I'm going to start browning it. So put that aside to start browning it with some olive oil then you want to slice up your onions so i just roughly chop them slice them and also chop up your other veggies so your celery this is all while your beef is browning on a in an iron pan now i'm going to put mine in the slow cooker today you can put yours in a saucepan it's up to you slow cooking this really does work best for this dish because you want your beef to go very very tender to fall apart basically when you're eating it once my beef celery and onions have been frying for about 10 minutes i would say i add in another couple of chunks of butter in total i use about two tablespoons worth of butter I then season it with salt and pepper. I personally add quite a lot of black pepper because I like that flavor. I then go in and add some herbs. So I'm adding some garlic powder or crushed garlic will work fine. I'm also going to be adding in some mixed herbs, which is rosemary and thyme and oregano. As long as there's a bit of rosemary in there and a bit of thyme, it will work wonders. And then I add in my mushrooms for a quick fry. Fry this for about five more minutes until the mushrooms have gone slightly soft. And then I'm going to add in some plain flour. Now the plain flour works as a thickening agent. So this is going to make your stew very thick, creamy, luxurious and delicious at the end um, when you're serving up. So add in about two tablespoons worth of plain flour or corn flour. The flour will mix with the butter quite well and it will sink into the softening veggies. And it just means when it's in the slow cooker with the stock, the flour slowly just thickens up the sauce. And um, yeah, it just takes away that watery feeling of a stew, turns it very thick and gravy-like. Once the flour has soaked in after a couple of minutes, I'm then going to add it all into the slow cooker with a cup full of my stock. I'm just measuring out in a cup today. So it's about 200 to 300 mils of hot water. I add the, sorry, I add the meat and the veggies into the slow cooker. I then add my stock cube and I add my entire bottle of dark ale or Guinness, whatever you want to use. Once that has added in, you want to slowly stir it just 
just for a minute or two just to just so the flour starts soaking into the liquid and all of the ingredients are properly mixed i then put my lid on and put a tea towel over my slow cooker this is a tip that my um that you guys actually shared with me and it makes such a huge difference it really really stops steam from escaping from your slow cooker especially at the moment when we're trying to save money with our electricity bills it just makes everything a little bit more economical and so much steam is saved and the cooking process works better so after about two to three hours with it cooking on medium i add in a large large handful a couple of, ha couple of handfuls of grated carrot optional but i think it really does add to the dish it sweetens the stew a little bit and it's just extra veg for you and then i will put the lid back on and cook that for a further around two hours on low you can cook this for really as long as you like the longer the better to be honest because it's such a rich stew the flavors really just keep getting richer the longer it's being cooked the beef goes very very tender very soft it falls apart having our dinner tonight with um some peas some frozen peas and some mashed potato the potato we we just added some um, butter and a little bit of horseradish that's a little tip for you um, it's a delicious mash that goes very well with this beef stew. And there we have it. It's a very low maintenance, easy dish to make, yet you cannot believe just how luxurious this tastes. It's so rich, the dark ale really adds to this dish. We had absolutely tons of leftovers, so we had this for dinner two nights in a row and there was a little bit of leftover to put in the freezer, which was fantastic. Um, a great meal and I highly recommend making this one okay next up oh my gosh we're making a chicken and leek pie now look at this pie I'm going to show you from start to finish how to make it and it's it's so much easier than you think so the first thing I'm going to do is um, grab all of my ingredients as you can see I'm using Tesco chicken here it's because Lawrence accidentally cooked himself lots of chicken from the Aldi chicken so he had to run out and grab some more chicken for me anyway I'm going to dice up my chicken thighs. People ask me how I prepare my chicken. I just literally dice it up. Uh, if I see something a bit odd, I do remove it, but otherwise I just dice it up and throw it in. It's just, it is what it is. Some people are funny about that, but we're not. Um, then I cut up my leeks while the chicken is um, frying for a little bit. I do sometimes keep the bottom of my leeks and try and regrow them. Um, it depends what the leeks came like. I don't think these are going to be easy to regrow because it looks like the roots have been like um, completely flattened. But anyway, I'm going to give it a go. So cut the bottom of the leek off, pop it in a glass of water on the windowsill. Refresh your water every now and then. Back to the recipe. I'm now going to slice up my leeks and my celery. What we're going to do is put those in the pan with the chicken to fry off for a while, let the leeks um, release all their moisture. I have washed my mushrooms, I'm also going to slice those. I have actually put in some leftover white onion with the chicken. Um, we had some white onion for lunch and there was about three quarters left. And once the leeks, the celery, the chicken and some leftover white onion that I added last minute has been cooking for a while, I can add my mushrooms, so about 5-10 to ten minutes of cooking time for all of the chicken and veggies before I add my mushrooms. As you can see there is so much to this dish it's going to make a very large pie for at least four people to be honest five to six people and with leftovers that we're going to have the next day for a stew so we had enough leftovers the next day for three portions with some rice and veg so once all of the veggies with the mushrooms have been cooking for about 15 minutes you want to add another knob of butter or some olive oil and two tablespoons of plain flour or corn flour. Now this will slowly sink into the veggies, it will make them thick, uh, it will make them a little bit clammy looking but you want this because once you've added your stock it will become a really thick beautiful creamy sauce. 
So add in your stock, we're doing a pint of chicken stock or veggie stock. Give that a really good stir, let it slowly stir for the next half an hour at least. You want all of your veggies to go nice and soft now, the sauce to really, really thicken up before you do anything else. So at this stage, I did give it a really good stir. I put on the lid and I left it for a while. When I came back, I added in my cream. So. I actually ran out of cream from Aldi, Lawrence got some from the co-op, I added about half of this pot, this is a 600ml pot, so I added about 300ml of double cream. Slowly stir that around and it becomes really thick. All the flavours start mixing together, the leeks work absolutely beautifully with this dish. It's such a Sunday afternoon with candles oh, type dinner. I stir that in. I have made sure that everything has cooled down and it's all on very low heat at this stage because you don't want your cream to curdle. We also need all of the mixture to completely cool down before we turn it into a pie. So I'm letting it cook for about 30 to 45 minutes on number one. Once that's done, I take the lid off, I give it a good stir again and I grab my pie dish. And this is where I'm going to put all of the contents of my pie into the dish. And as you'll see, I use about three quarters of the mixture or two thirds of the mixture for the pie. And I still have a huge amount for um, chicken stew the next day. So again, as I said, such a great meal for really making large portions and lots of leftovers. It's easy to freeze. Okay, if you are turning this into a pie, my number one tip is to let the contents of the pie cool down completely before adding your pastry. You don't want your pastry to start cooking and going soggy before you've added it into the oven because it's, it's not going to work well. So the first thing I do is unroll my Aldi pastry and just make sure there's no tears in it or holes. If there are, I just put it back together like with my fingers. Then you want to carefully place it over your pie dish and I grab a fork and this is where I push the pastry down into the edge of the pie dish just so the pastry remains there during the cooking process and then just cut around the edge of the pie. Don't fear the leftover pastry is not going to waste. I decided to get my artistic skills on and I made some leaves and a pumpkin and actually they turned out really well. I used a, a chopstick to score out the pastry then a knife to cut through it so it was nice and easy honestly i felt so autumnal this day it was just absolutely beautiful the pie turned out really well now if you are going to be making decorations on the top of your pie i always find that the decorations uh, tend to melt into the other part of the pastry. So today what I did was made out my decorations, cut them out, and then I glazed the pie, the pie lid, before I added my decorations onto the pie. So I use an egg glaze, you can use a milk glaze. Glaze it really well and then I added my decorations in and I don't glaze the decorations. In it goes. Oh my gosh, it's going to be so delicious, so excited. There we go, look how great that looks. Honestly, very low maintenance, very achievable. Anyone can do this. Um, I have linked down below a pie dish that's really, really good, I really recommend, and also a um, ceramic dish or a cast iron dish, um, which I do a lot of my cooking in, if you do want to make this pie. But serve it with a side of peas, you can also serve it with mashed potato. What I would suggest when cutting it is make sure the pastry is cut properly first and then you can go in with your spoon and um, yeah, dig out contents of the pie and oh my gosh, so blooming good. Next up, I'm making my veggie sausage casserole. This is a really delicious warming dish, perfect for midweek, um, really hearty and yeah, we really enjoy it in the house. So the first thing you're going to do is, as usual, prepare your veggies. Cut your onions up, 
I'm using two or maybe three. Uh, the Everyday Essential Onions from Aldi this week were really small. Um, sometimes they're big, sometimes they're small. This week they were small, so I'm using three uh, white onions. And then I'm going to cut up any mushrooms I have left from the recipes this week. So um, I did have some mushrooms left over, probably like a large handful. So this one's really super quick. So you can just throw some oil into your cast iron pan with your onion and your mushrooms. I fry them for a while and then I add some seasonings. So I'm adding some garlic today. I also add some Italian herbs, um, although it's not really a, an Italian dish. Italian herbs from Aldi just has rosemary, sage and oregano, I believe. Once the herbs and mushrooms and onions have been frying for a little while, I add in some diced or chopped carrots. I just grated a carrot, um, chopped it up and threw it in there just so all the flavours can mingle for a while. And then I do my little sauce thickening trick. So I added about two tablespoons of flour, mix it in with the veggies and then go in and add your veggie or chicken stock. And of course, I'm adding lots and lots of black pepper. So normally six sausages come in a plant menu sausage pack from Aldi. These are the rosemary and onion sausages. I did actually have two left over from a meal we were having the other day. So I made this into an eight sausage casserole because we had dinner that evening and then we had lots of leftovers for the next day. I used a red oxo cube this time actually. Crushed it up, I added my hot water in and then add it into my pan of frying sausages and veggies. These have been frying with the flour for about 10 minutes now. Um, the sausages do go in frozen, it's absolutely fine. They defrost very quickly as well. So add in my stock after about 15 to 20 minutes of the veggies and the sausages cooking together. Give it a really good stir because you want the flour to start releasing from the veg and the sauce to thicken up before you leave it to cook for a while. I then just put my lid on and leave it for about half an hour. That will do absolutely perfectly. After about half an hour, I add in my drained butter beans. These add a really good amount of protein. Really, really delicious, really easy to add to dishes. You don't need to drain them as well um, because the liquid they come in is absolutely fine. Let that all cook for another probably 10 to 15 minutes or maybe even longer if you want. You can leave this on low and let it slow cook for a while. So I put my lid back on and I make the sides. We're having uh, green beans or sugar snap peas with some mash on the side of our uh, veggie sausage casserole today. Um, this can all be cooked within the hour, honestly. It's just super duper simple and easy. Um, as you can see, the sauce has really thickened up. Everything's cooked perfectly. So I don't really need to do any cooking. So I just keep it warm now. Uh, wait till my sugar snap peas have cooked. And serve up. We have two sausages each at the time. They're really scrumptious, very, very filling. Throw in um, our mash and our greens and we enjoy this hearty, ah, oh, delicious dinner. Um, I really, really love this dinner. And as it's so easy to make, we actually have it quite often. Next up, we're making my easy beef stroganoff. So you're gonna need your, the rest of your beef, your creme fraiche, your mushrooms, your rice. Um, I did actually have some leftover broccoli in the fridge, so I served it with some broccoli. This is, again, a super duper simple but effective autumn recipe. So chop up your beef into little diced chunks and then you want to start frying your beef with the onion. I'm using two little white onions today. Then you want to wash and slice up your mushrooms. Cook your onions and garlic together. I throw in all of my sliced mushrooms. I'm going to cook these for a while until the mushrooms and onions have gone quite soft, translucent. I then add a big knob of butter. If you don't want to keep using butter, you can use just a normal olive oil or something just to keep everything moist. And I'm going to crush up my oxo cubes. I do actually use two because I want it to be very, very rich. 
and with the oxo cubes i'm going to add one large teaspoon of english mustard this really really makes the sauce what it is with this uh, beef dish it's so delicious i only add in about 300 mils of um, water into this stock so it's a really rich mixture which is going to go very well with the sauce the cream the creme fraiche is going to make most of the sauce up so um, but the mustard really makes it so if you have mustard i would recommend adding it just after I've made the stock, I add the beef into the dish, um, fry that until it's completely browned all over. I get lots of questions about rice, so I'm going to do a really simple, easy guide here. So what I do is I grab one small cup from the cupboard, and it's always got to be the same size. Uh, one cup makes about two to three large portions of rice, and one cup of rice to two cups of water. So. In a Pyrex dish, I add my one cup of rice and then two cups of water using the same cups. It's really easy to do the measurements. A pinch of salt. I put a little plate over the Pyrex jug and I put that in the microwave for exactly 20 minutes. And you've got perfectly fluffy rice. It's so simple, really easy to do. And um, yeah, it just makes cooking rice less of a hassle. I used to find it really annoying and difficult. <laughs> Um, but yeah, one cup of rice, two cups of water. Anyway, so I'm coming back to my beef now. It's um, pretty much been frying for about 10 minutes. I'm adding in a tablespoon of flour because that's going to thicken up the sauce. I'm adding my stock and giving that a stir for a while, putting it on um, a low heat, and then I'm adding the entire pot of creme fraiche. The next thing we're going to do is add our pot of creme fraiche into the beef stroganoff. Now this is what makes stroganoff, stroganoff is the creme fraiche. It has a tartness to it that just like normal cream doesn't have. Um, and yeah, it just really, really, really goes well with this dish. So add a pot of creme fraiche in, bearing in mind this is going to make enough for four people. So a pot of creme fraiche is not too bad. Um, I've also added in my mustard and uh, red oxo cube stock cube mixture together. I add a little bit more hot water because I noticed it's very, very thick. So I just need to water it down a tiny bit. And then I put my lid on and leave it for 20 to 30 minutes um, on a low to medium heat. And this really can all be done in the space of 40 minutes. It took me less than an hour to have this um, started and on the dinner table so it can be also a very quick dinner and it's absolutely delicious. I served mine with leftover broccoli and some rice and peas and yeah that's really it. I also chopped some parsley which I throw over the top, parsley goes really well with this dish uh, and it's just such a simple effective easy dish. My son absolutely loved this. I did whiz his up because um, the beef can be quite tough on this one because you fried it, but he absolutely loved it. Cooking my quick and easy midweek chicken curry. This is chicken thigh curry. I use the chicken thighs with the skin and bone. Um, we really enjoy that. This is such an easy curry. I made this very quickly during the week. This screams autumn to me, one that we all really enjoy. So the very first thing I do is put all of my chicken thighs skin down just so they can brown properly. I do turn them over in a bit. If you have five or 10 minutes first thing in the morning, I would put all of your chicken into a Ziploc bag with all of the herbs and spices and some olive oil and let that soak throughout the day. I didn't do that today, didn't have the time. So I browned the chicken, then I added my curry seasoning. So a tablespoon of medium curry powder. This does actually pack a little punch. So if you're very, very sensitive with spice, just get the mild, but it has, it has a good amount of spice in to, for me, to be honest. Then I add some ground coriander just for extra flavour that is completely optional just adding the curry powder is absolutely fine as it is I make sure there's enough butter or olive oil in the pan just so nothing dries out too much and the spices have like a really good fat sauce to soak into I then add my chopped up onions so two white onions chopped up throw into the dish let them cook for a while 
And then I crush my fresh garlic into this. Um, you can add garlic powder, you can buy pre-crushed garlic, or you can just crush some garlic into it. All works the same, but crushed garlic is probably the best for this dish. So once the chicken and onions have been cooking on their own for about 10 to 15 minutes on a medium to high frying, you want to keep it all moving, keep all of the uh, spices coated onto the chicken and the onions. I'm then going to move on to make my rice. The rice takes 20 minutes. As I said, one cup of rice, two cups of water, a little bit of salt in the microwave for 20 minutes. Once the rice is on, I add my chopped tin tomatoes into the curry. I'm also going to be adding coconut milk much later into the process, but add your chopped tin tomatoes, put the lid on and leave that to cook for a while. The flavours all combine lovely. It cooks pretty quickly. It simmers down for a while. The tomato sauce will reduce and um, the chicken will fully cook whilst that process is going on. So... Everything is now fully cooked. It's on medium to high. I'm going to turn it down to low and then add my coconut milk. And this makes it very creamy. Uh, it also takes away some of the spice if you're feeding this to um, someone who's funny about spice. Once the coconut milk has warmed up, I've, ha I've got it on low to medium heat now. I'm going to just double check all of the chicken is cooked, which it is, I know it is. Um, but I can't live without this meat thermometer. Honestly, it's just saved so much anxiety <laughs> in the kitchen for me. Um, I'm then going to add two uh, tablespoons of honey or one large tablespoon of honey, to be honest. This is such an easy trick to really like just add some richness to your curry. Or you can add some mango chutney into the dish. If you want, if you want like the sweet velvety richness to it add either honey or mango chutney and yeah it's absolutely delicious um again throw some parsley over the rice i did add a little bit of cumin powder to my rice before i cooked it and then serve up i personally have lots of sauce with my curry as you can see i've got two chicken thighs and some sauce and um yeah just a really easy quick midweek curry we really enjoy curry it's great all year round but something about it hits different in the autumn winter i really hope you've enjoyed these recipes i've tried to make them as easy to follow along as possible but as i said i'm currently making something where you can get all of my recipes um in one place so i really hope you enjoyed today's video i'll see you guys soon for another five under 25 pound meal videos and yeah bye